してんじゃねえぞ何絶対してやるプレイ Well I'm over here Bring it on. Ah, 
Time to clean up!
with finesse.
with finesse. Out of my way! Yeah. Come on. 
I want you to know, last night, Arakawa seemed at peace. Like an actor stepping off stage to thunderous applause. I think that's because he achieved his goals. He dissolved the Omi, and he got to see you again. He certainly looked like he was enjoying his Peking duck. I commented on it, actually. Can you believe this? He said he'd never had it before. What? 
He said he almost got to try it 50 years ago, but then his father was killed, and he'd never gotten around to ordering it again. Huh. After we finished, I said I'd walk him to his hotel, but he refused the offer. Said he wanted time alone to just take in the night air. I didn't push it. I just bid him a good evening and left. But if I had pushed it, he'd probably be alive right now. I failed him. No, it's not your fault. Let me ask you something. Do you think it was only loyalists? Yes. No doubt in my mind. It was revenge for his role in dissolving the Omi. Men who saw fit to end someone's life over such a thing. How could Yakuza do that? Kill a captain like him? Kasuga. The Omi loyalists in Kanto are already attempting to form a new faction. They complain the loudest about the dissolution. I imagine one of them is the likely culprit. Forming a new faction? After killing Arakawa's son? Yes. Care to hazard a guess as to who is directing them? Because I think it's the one man who could actually bring them to heel. Ryo Aoki. No. The young master? Ordering the death of his own father? He wouldn't be the first to commit patricide for power. The one silver lining is, with Arakawa gone, there's very few men Aoki can give direct orders to. Kasuga, you should take revenge for Arakawa. I can lend you men from the Seiryu clan. I don't need guns. You won't seek vengeance? No. Arakawa-san wouldn't want me to kill the young master. I'm sure of that. Then... What will you do? Before he died, Arakawa talked about how sad it was the Yakuza were getting used. Used like pawns by people in power. That's why he disbanded the Omi. I think he wanted the Yakuza to go back to their roots. Like how they ought to use their power to help the weak and vulnerable, not just take shit by force. That's how it was. That's how it could be again. Arakawa-san had a dream, and I can continue it. If all I do is kill one guy, especially if it's his son, all of Arakawa's sacrifices will be for nothing. If that's the only thing I do to honor him, I won't be able to face him in the afterlife. <sighs> what I really want to do is open the young master's eyes. Give him a wake-up call. Smack him upside the head if I have to. That's the best thing I could do. Kasuga, Harakawa was truly blessed to have you. Do what you think is right. I'm sorry if my idea of payback offended you in any way. I assure you it did not, Chairman. How do you plan on getting an audience with Aoki? You can't just walk into the Tokyo government office and ask to see the governor. <laughs> It's all good. I think I've got something figured out. You can pull a plan out of your ass just like that, huh? <laughs> Still, going anywhere near Aoki will mean tight security. Take some of my men. At the very least, they'll bring your body back. I appreciate the offer, really. But I'll be fine by myself. I've already got the best crew I could ask for. Oh, 
jeez. You waited for me? How'd it go? Fine. Sorry to run off and get treated to a fancy meal without you guys. Well, looks like it put some pep back in you. Yeah, I figure if I keep moping around, Arakawa-san's gonna come down and kick my ass. But anyway, how about we go visit Kume? Visit Kume? Why? To make him arrange a meeting. I want to meet with Aoki. And Kume's got the hookup, seeing as he's Ogasawara's replacement. Sure, but why do you... I'm going to get him to start thinking and doing things like Arakawa-san would have wanted. Uh, sounds like a long shot. What makes you think Kume will cooperate with you? Oh, did I leave out the part where we rough him up? I mean, the guy deserves it. Hell yeah, he does. I'm in. Get out the bloodhounds and let's start the search. No search required. Today is announcement day. What's that? The deadline for every candidate to submit their paperwork. The political brawl has begun. Man, do you know everything? The fate of the Great Wall hangs on this election. Why wouldn't I be following it closely? Do you know where Kume would be on announcement day? Well, each candidate will give their first speech in their district, usually on a huge stage. Kume's district, Kanagawa's second, has a massive stage by the gate on Isazaki Road. Let's head over to Isazaki Road then! Here. Sure you can beat me? I'll kill you. Oh, no. 
Virtuous law-abiding citizens are cowering in fear! What's become of our once great nation? When did morality become the butt of the joke? I alone can deliver this country back into the hands of her upstanding citizenry! I am Sota Kume, and a vote for me is a vote for change! After all we've been through, I'm actually starting to agree with the guy. Come on, what he's saying is a load of crap. No matter how drunk everyone is on Bleach Japan Jungle Juice, that kind of drunk can mess you up as bad as my kind. Tragic way, Kume is just another name on Aoki's long list of victims. Hmm. Our enemies don't deserve our sympathy. Good point. Let's get him. Hey, mind letting us through? Excuse us. Hey, you can't just barge in here. Oh, sorry, sir. Could you just let us... Wait. Don't I know you? Oh, yeah. You were a bodyguard in the parking lot! He's not the only guy we've seen before. There's a bunch of Omi here. Well, look at that. You saved me the trouble of tracking you down. Time to pay for that shit you pulled in the parking lot! I'm not big on bullying, but... Well... Take this! You're in it now, <laughs>
Thought you could interfere, did you? Well, not today. I doubt this was the only speech Kume's giving today. Where's he going right now? His campaign stops and stuff are listed on his website. The more people, the better. But I can promise, you ain't getting close to Kume. Will he not talk to regular people? No. But don't worry, he's gonna win. Governor's orders. All y'all's been blacklisted as threats. You better get ready for the takeover. Boys, than I could count are rolling on over here to Injincho. Whole place will be swarmed. You won't be able to take a shit without us knowing. Fuckers! Aoki's always one step ahead of us. <laughs> I certainly am. I realize there's no precedent for a governor to intervene in national politics. But there's never been a precedent any time we advanced as a society. What about your critics who say you're just too young? That national politics is no place for schoolyard debates? <laughs> Are they implying local politics is some kind of playground? No, I don't think they're saying that. How about we take another look at the survey results? 80% of respondents said they support Governor Aoki assuming the role of party chair. The principal reason for their support was the success of the Kamrocho 3K plan. Do you have any comments about that, Aoki-san? I couldn't have achieved the amazing results of the 3K plan without the Tokyo Metropolitan Police. That was how cooperation between law enforcement and local government should look. What about the Yakuza still in Kamurocho after the Tojo clan's collapse? There are rumors that a delegation of Kansai Yakuza have filled the void. By Kansai Yakuza, do you mean the Omi Alliance? Because I recently heard that they are officially dissolved. Yes, that is confirmed. But doesn't that in fact prove something else? Doesn't it prove we can reduce Yakuza activity without a risky policy like the Kamurocho 3K plan? It's not a risky policy. Not compared to the risks of letting Yakuza run free. I'm sure you've also heard that Masumi Arakawa, an officer who spearheaded the dissolution, was murdered. So you see, it may seem like this was a peaceful process, but I think it was anything but. As always, the underworld keeps hidden its dark, unseemly truth. On the other hand, the Kamurucho 3K plan didn't involve any murder at all. My plan was the perfect example of a peaceful process, accomplished with my expertise from Bleach Japan. Speaking of which, the Citizens Liberal Party is endorsing quite a number of Bleach Japan candidates this cycle. As party chair, what are your priorities? I want to rejuvenate the Citizens Liberal Party. The Bleach Japan candidates are young and brimming with energy. By harnessing that energy, I know we can bleach all the gray zones in this entire nation. This bastard's using Arakawa's death to win an election, after all but pulling the trigger himself. It's disgusting. Just when I thought I couldn't hate politicians anymore, he gives me a reason. Guys, remember the mission. Kume's going to give another speech somewhere, so what do we do? Well, judging by how it went down here, we won't be able to lay a finger on him. Sounds like you're in a tight spot. Chairman? So, you figured your best path to Aoki was just to scare the shit out of Kume? <laughs> Guilty as charged. But they're always one step ahead of us. Anyway, what are you doing here? I forgot to give you something, back at Heian Tower. Huh? Eh? 
can't think of what that be. What is it? Kazuda, did you already forget the task you entrusted to me? The task I... Oh! Finding a candidate! Yes. Remember the whole point of collecting all that money to make Kume lose? Yeah, did you find someone? Someone who can win? Well, I searched far and wide. But you didn't find anyone. But then, all of a sudden, it hit me. Yeah? Lay it on me. Kasuga, you should run. What? I only wish I'd thought of it earlier. Wait just a second, back it up. Why the hell should it be me? I don't have a snowball's chance in hell of winning this. True. I doubt you'd even get enough votes to qualify for the return of your registration deposit. So why would you want to flush three million down the drain? Now well, the money doesn't matter. It does to me! Three million yen is a deal if it gives us a chance to catch Kume. I I'm not really following, Chairman. In every election, the candidates drive around in their trucks giving speeches. The district's not that big, so they frequently run into each other. When they do, it's customary for them to wish each other luck and shake hands. It's a farce, of course, but it's custom. That's your chance to get close to him. So if I run in the election, I can walk right up to Kume. Compared to Kume, you'd be a nobody, what they call a fringe candidate. Since Kume's victory is assured, he'll be expected to be a good sport. That includes not turning you down for a handshake if you ask for one. He can't just say no? If he did, everyone would say he acted like an arrogant jerk to the underdog. Bad press spreads quickly. Public opinion changes with the wind. You see how perfect it is? This is how you corner Kume. See, your original plan was to make Kume lose. But now the plan is just to use him as a stepping stone, correct? Uh, aren't you guys forgetting something? Ichiban did hard time. For murder. It doesn't matter what's on your record. Once you've served your term, you can run. What do you say, Kasuga? Mm. I wish I could tell you to take your time and think it over, but time is a luxury you don't have. The deadline to announce your candidacy is today. You have to decide right now. Then... I'll do it! Seriously? Just because it's legal doesn't mean it's sane, but... Then hurry to the election office and get your paperwork done. It's the government, so naturally they close pretty early. Wait, what time is it? Holy shit, guys, we gotta hurry! Let's run! Where's the election office, anyway? In the Nishihama building on Carriage Highway. Thanks! Take this! You sure you can beat me? Yeah. I'll show Over you! Here. Who wants to go? Yeah. 
watch me. Let's go! I Hey. Not gonna happen. A long time ago, this road was used primarily by men on horseback. You might have even seen some of those fancy white horses. Oh, yeah? Think there might have been a Prince Charming up on one of those? Eh, yeah, bunch of fairy tale nonsense, if you ask me. Then and now. Wow, you must be really fun at parties. Nah, I bet they're around even now. 
A princess, I mean. Huh? A prince on a white horse in modern times would be like... I, I, I guess it'd be like a, like a handsome dude rolling through in a fancy foreign car. Slap Jun Gihan in a nice car. Instant prince. You have literally no filter, do you? Oh, now, now hold on. I, I don't believe I'm entirely fit to play a prince. I don't hear you denying the handsome part. news and bad news what here we go which one do you want to hear first they always ask that in foreign dramas i'd want to hear the bad news first just get it out of the way same bad news for me too i'd rather not have any unpleasant aftertaste well, i'd want to hear the good news i always eat my favorite stuff first don't leave us hanging adachi san what's the news well the good news is i just learned something about you guys and the bad news there's no punchline to this bit <laughs> what an asshole. いらっしゃいませ。
ありがとうございました
Hm? Thank you. <laughs> Take care. I never formally introduced myself. I'm Iroha Yanagi. I'm helping out at the bar. Nice to meet you. I'm Ichiban Kasuga. Nice to meet you. Did he hire you to chat with the customers? Yep. I pull my weight around here. If your glass is empty, just give me a holler. I'll get you squared. Or if you just want to chat, I'm all ears. The customers who got to know me at my old bar actually used to call me Good Ear Iroha. So whenever you need an ear, I'm here to listen. Uh, sure, but what would I even tell you? I never got to come to these types of bars much. Whatever you want, really. You could even tell me about your dumb arguments with Adachi san. <laughs> You'd really want to hear that? Of course. I love hearing about the little stuff that makes people better friends. So, no subject too dull, no topic off limits, okay? Kasuga-san, guess what? I finally got more details on that rumor. What rumor? You know, the one I mentioned earlier? Trust me, you're gonna want to hear this. 
Hey, if it's juicy, let's hear it. So, I heard this from a customer. But apparently there's a small shipping company called Zhou Long Trading over on Eugene Street. And if you tell the guy working there a certain password, he'll let you into a top secret weapon shop. This shop's not legal, is it? <laughs> Doubt it. According to the rumors, he's pretty much cornered the black market. So, if you need anything dangerous and illegal, he's your go-to guy. Wow, sounds intense. I know, right? I bet he's got the coolest stuff. Hey, what do you think this guy looks like? You think he's one of those sexy anti-hero types? <sighs> if only I could meet a guy like that. You think he'd want to say hi to me? No, that's probably not a good idea. Something tells me he's more villain than anti-hero. Nah, you say so. Anyway. You have any idea what his password might be? Oh, let me think. It was... Lao Chow Chow Ya. There we go. Love Choo Choo Ya? Wrong. Lao Chow Chow Ya. I'm clueless as to what it means, if anything at all. Lao Chow Chow Ya. And I just say it to the dude who works there? Well, do keep in mind this is all hearsay, but where there's smoke, there's fire, so... Some of it might be true. And besides, even if he does turn out to be a villain, you're strong enough to make it out alive. Appreciate the vote of confidence. I guess it wouldn't hurt to check it out. Thanks for the tip. Now, if he really is my type, nice body, a little on the wild side, hook me up with a date. Hey, Namba. Anything gone down yet with that legend malt? Well, I've been watching the counter like a hawk. But the bartender wasn't kidding when he said nobody comes here. Yeah, he did say this was more of a hobby for him. That's exactly it. The only people coming in are our friends like Adachi and Sachan. Which means that legend malt is probably just gonna sit behind the counter for the rest of our lives. I was worried over nothing. I feel better already. Well, I don't know if you should be that relaxed about it. It's not like he'd carry something he was never gonna sell. Welcome. Hmm. What a lovely little establishment you have. Your first time in, sir? It is. See? He does get actual customers. First time I've seen a first-timer. I've heard some rumors about this place from some good sources. Oh, yeah? Rumors about what? That you carry the fabled whiskey known as the Legend Malt. Ooh, uh... Well, then the rumors are true. Pour me a glass then, bartender. If anyone can appreciate such a thing, it's me. Huh. Ichiban, what now? What can we do? We gotta apologize before it's too late. But I'm too broke to apologize. Forget about the money. You'll be in even deeper shit if he drinks that. I really must apologize, but my legend malt isn't for sale. Why would that be? Is it reserved for your regulars? Not exactly. I just don't think you're fit to order it. Excuse me? You say this knowing I'm the editor-in-chief of Good Dandy? He's from Good Dandy? No way. What the hell is that? It's a rich man's magazine, full of nice cars and swanky restaurants. Well, that's terribly unfortunate. For you, if you had even a modicum of customer service, I'd have written you an absolutely dazzling review. Put me in your magazine or don't. That's your call to make. Believe you me, I'll be giving you the front page. 
Everyone's going to know about the snob running this backwater hole. This your idea of a quarrel, sir? Perhaps, but was it not you who flung the first stone? <laughs> Fine. You back me into a corner here. The legend malt on that shelf is something I ordered for a very special customer. I don't intend to offer it to anyone but her. And what makes her so special? The fact that she stole my heart. That bottle was to be a symbol of my affection. Time and time again, she would tell me how she dreamt of being able to try it. So I took it upon myself to indulge her and waited for her to arrive. But for as long as I waited, she never came through the door. Six months went by, then a year, until I finally got word that she had been in a car accident. She was taken from me. In some ways, that legend malt is the only thing I have left of her. Oh. Given that, are you still going to insist I pour it? I have walked through the doors of many a bar in my time, but I've never met a bartender with a tail like that. That quiet strength, the very essence of good dandy magazine. He didn't even get to take a whiff of the bottle, and now he never will. I guess that settles it. Yeah, but now it's even bigger than we thought. We gotta do the honest thing and come clean. Why? Didn't you hear that story? The legend malts a treasure of his lost love. <sighs> I know, but I'll never be able to replace it on pocket change. Well, if you can't do it alone, then I'll help out. Y you serious, Ichiban? Yeah. All I've been doing till now is help you find ways to dodge the problem. What I should have done is help you do the right thing. Meaning, I'm just as guilty. We're in this together, man. Ichiban, you're a great guy, you know that? But I can't take advantage of you like that, man. I've got to come up with that money somehow. Ha! <laughs> What a jackass. He swallowed that story hook, line, and sinker. Come again? That long lost love of mine? She never even existed. Then why wouldn't you pour him the legend malt? Back when I opened the place, I figured I'd need some high end stuff behind the counter to draw in the big spenders. So I picked up an empty bottle of legend malt and filled it with bargain barrel whiskey. Purely for show. Nobody actually orders anything that expensive. But every once in a while, dimwit like him waltzes in. So I give them the same old sob story, and they scatter like roaches. Wait, so Namba, that means what you drank was... Bottom shelf swill. <laughs> you gotta be shitting me! Hey, what the hell's so funny? You gotta hear this! Guess what Namba did! Come on, don't say it. Don't you dare! Uh, sir, you can ignore this, Joker. <laughs> I don't understand you people. I guess it was the look of that bottle that got me thinking it was real. That ever happened to you? Where the taste is all in your head? Hey, <laughs> just be grateful you don't have to worry anymore. I still have to worry about people finding out. Ichiban, you wouldn't tell Adachi or Sachan about this, would you? Y you can't. Don't worry, man. I wouldn't rat you out like that. So, you'll keep it a secret? Yeah, but you have to buy me a drink. Bargain barrel whiskey, okay? Sure, it's a deal. Yo, Sachan. You drinking by yourself? Yeah. Isn't it pathetic? Sit down and help me save what's left of my pride. Huh? 
Everything all right? Well, you could say some stuff's happened. Oh, okay. I get it. I already know your hair's naturally curly, after all. Hmm? How do you know that? There are some strands here and there that look like they escaped your straightener. Oh, yeah. Well, lately my hair doesn't stay straight as long as it used to. My guess is you were trying to get it nice and smooth this morning, it took forever, and that's why now you want to get a drink that's nice and smooth. You're more observant than you look, Ichiban. <laughs> But actually, I'm more upset about my sister than my hair right now. What's going on with her? Something happened? Remind me, how much did I tell you about my family while we were drinking the other night? You said you were too controlling when it came to Nanoha and your dad. Eventually there was a big fight and he left home. That was seven or eight years ago. And did I tell you the reason for that fight? Yeah, it was because you told Nanoha to break up with some chump. The boyfriend with the consulting firm? Okay, so I spilled all the beans. <laughs> anyway, his name's Katsuragawa, and apparently they're still together. Damn. Longer relationship than I've ever been in. If he wasn't so damn annoying, I might let this go. But Katsuragawa's a criminal. He's even been seen going in and out of Seiryu Clan HQ. Not to mention, he's dangerous and walks around with his own personal posse. He used to run with a biker gang. I mean, I've heard nothing but bad rumors about him since I left home. <laughs> Not how really knows how to pick him, huh? Shut up. I've got some girls from the club looking into him right now. I hope they can find out more. Trying really hard not to worry here since I can't do anything but wait. Ah, uh, so that's why you're drinking away your troubles in here. Yeah, well, <laughs> now that I've talked to you about it, I feel a bit better. Maybe I'll skip the next round. Oh, let's not start talking crazy now. A dachi-san? What's up with the suit? Oh, don't you remember? We're doing that out-of-court settlement. Oh, yeah! Takashi-kun scraped that guy's bumper. And he demanded Takashi-kun pay him a million yen, so you decided to meet with the guy. Hoping it's just a damn con man. Wearing a suit to the settlement, huh? You really care about this kid, Adachi-san. Well, there's one more reason I was thinking I should look sharp today. You know how I sent a letter to Takashi asking for the contact info of the car owner? Takashi wrote back and said he wanted to be there when I meet the guy. Guess he finally wants to see his daddy long legs in person. <laughs> After 20 years of being sent money and all. You know, that whole time I came up with excuses to never meet Takashi. I, I just sent him letters. So Takashi-kun's gonna meet Yamada-san for the first time today? Yeah. I figured the least I could do is look the way a big shot should. Except, even though it is a suit, it's pretty plain for a rich guy, ain't it? Oh, give me a break, man. This is all I had. Anyway, I explained what's gonna go down here to the staff, so we're good on that front. Only thing left for me to ask is if uh, you're willing to stay and back me up, Kasagun. Why me? Well, a real daddy long legs would have a lackey with him, don't you think? Yeah, I guess. Come on, don't make me deal with this asshole and the kid all by myself. Please, man. Fine. But when you interviewed Takashi 20 years ago, it was in person, right? What if he remembers your face? He was five years old at the time. No way he would remember me. Especially now that I probably look like his damn grandpa. Here's hoping. Excuse me, is Yamada-san here? Are, are, are you Takashi? Yes, I am. Wow. Look at you, all grown up. What? Oh, no, 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 it's just, <laughs> I still imagine you the way I did when we first started writing each other 20 years ago. <laughs> I'm Yamada, 
We finally meet Yamada-san. Thank you so much for supporting me all this time. Oh, I just... enjoy lending a hand to promising kids like you. That's... <laughs> that's what a philanthropist does. So, why are we meeting here? What is this place? Oh, it's a, a, a bar I run as a hobby. I'm a... <clears throat> I'm a big jazz guy. So you're also a patron of the arts. Amazing. <laughs> and who are you? Oh, uh, I'm... I'm Yamada-sama's secretary. You have a secretary too? You're even more loaded than I thought. Oh, yeah. I always have my secretary come with me when I negotiate deals. He's a... <laughs> he's a sharp cookie. Uh, how reassuring. <sighs> now, Takashi-kun, where's the owner of this car you scraped? His name is Hasegawa-san. He should be here soon. Oh, there he is! <laughs> Asking me to come all the way out here to a dive like this? All I can say is you better have my money. There's a few things I'd like to ask you first, Hasegawa-san. Oh, you must be Daddy Longlegs. What do you want? Why are you demanding one million for a scratch bumper? Because this is no ordinary car. Oh, is that right? I don't know much about cars, but it looked pretty ordinary to me. <laughs> it may look like a typical sedan, but it's actually a top-of-the-line British luxury car. And now I have to send it back to England for repairs! Right. Mind telling us how the accident went down? Well, I was just sitting there, waiting for the signal, and this kid here, barely paying attention to what he's doing, of course, just pulls up right next to me on his bike. That's when his pedals scraped up against my bumper! Takashi-kun, does all of that sound right to you? I guess. It didn't feel like I hit anything. I mean, I felt the hem of my pants sliding along something, but... Ha! I wish it'd been the hem of your pants! When I heard the scraping sound, I looked over just in time to see your pedal gouging the hell out of my paint job! Really? Well, that's funny. What is? If it was a regular sedan, all you'd be able to see from the driver's seat would be the hood. No way you'd see the bumper down below. Oh, in my car, you can see it. Steering wheel's on the left, you know. You obviously don't know much about foreign luxury cars. On the left, huh? That's even funnier. Didn't you say the car was from England? Did you know, British and Japanese cars both have the wheel on the right? Uh, uh, you might want to come clean before you dig yourself a deeper hole. I say the mark on the bumper was already there, and the car is about as British as me. So what'll it be? Admit you were trying to pull a fast one and we'll let you go. But if you decide you want to keep bitching over nothing, then my secretary here will have to intervene. By the way, I'm not just Yamada-sama's secretary. I'm also his bodyguard. Ah, <sighs> fuck! So, it really was all a scam. And a shitty one at that. Wait, Yamada-san, did you know it was a scam from the start? Uh, more or less. One million ain't much to a guy like me, of course, but uh, us rich folks don't like our money going to criminals. We gotta do our part, you know? Wow, rich people are so cool. <laughs> <laughs> that we are. So, how about that bar exam, Takashi? Think you'll pass this year? Well, actually, I found out I didn't. Oh. That's a shame. But you know, the average age of the people who do pass is 29. So I figure as long as I pass it by then, I'm good. <laughs> Isn't that, uh, four years from now? Yeah, and when I do become a lawyer, you'll be the first to know, Yamada-san. Ah! Looking forward to it. Thanks. I have some studying to do today, so I'm gonna get going. Hang in there. Four more years of sending money. Oh, man, that's gonna be tough. Here's hoping it only takes four years. Wait, what do you mean? If he's getting caught up in a simple scam like this, how's he supposed to understand the finer points of law? Hey, now, don't be like that. No, he's just too honest, is all. And who knows, maybe he'll pass next year. I sure hope so. Well, either way, at least he bought my rich guy act. <laughs> yeah, well, we can thank my little performance for that. Your performance? I was the one with the starring role. If there... You know what? Or whatever, man. Let's just celebrate the fact that we pulled it off. Yeah, 
with the cheapest drinks money can buy. Hello, Kasuga-san. <laughs> I must say, this place is quite comfortable. Yeah, ain't it? Also, seriously, man, how's a guy make drinking alone look so cool? Guess it's easy when you're as handsome as you. <laughs> That's kind of you to say. Why don't you let me buy you a drink? Yo, for real? <laughs> hey, now you're speaking my language, man! You certainly are a mysterious one, Kasuga-san. Sunghui speaks highly of you as well. I dare say it makes me jealous. <laughs> oh, come on. Uh, speaking of, have you been with her long? You've got this butler and lady of the house thing going on. It's only been three years since I was brought into the Komijul. I can't say it's been long. No shit. Up until then, I was with a group called the Jingon Mafia. I was their leader's body double. Body double? You mean like a decoy? Just like the real thing? Indeed. If my master was ever targeted by our enemies, I was to be killed in his place. That was my duty. I didn't figure people still did that kind of stuff. Uh, wait, does that mean your face is... An imitation, yes. What you see is a result of large-scale plastic surgery. But I'll have you know my previous face was rather handsome as well. A shame not a single picture of it exists anymore. Really? Out the window then, huh? In a manner of speaking, yes. So that means Junki Han isn't your real name either, right? What's your real name then? <laughs> Surely we're not that close yet, are we? Come on! First step in becoming friends is calling each other by name, right? Hmm. Well, isn't this awkward? I'm afraid I'm the type to want a bit more distance with people. That how it was with the Jingon Mafia? From the name, I'm guessing it was some sort of Korean Yakuza-like thing. Weren't you once a member of the Tojo clan, Kasuga-san? I'm surprised you've never heard of the Jingon Mafia. I was in the clink for a long time. The Jingon Mafia and the Tojo clan clashed in the 1980s, long before you were serving time. The 80s? Dude, that's 40 years ago! I was just a baby back then. Doubt I even had hair. Yes, I had yet to be born myself. Regardless, early in the decade, the Tojo clan attacked the Jingon Mafia and massacred a great number of them. Around 30 or so. 30?! Back then, Kamurocho was the most sought-after territory in all of Asia. I've heard the conflicts for control were rather intense. The Tojo clan was incredibly strong, and they made sure it was a well-known fact. Still, to off 30 of them is... To get their revenge, the Jingon Mafia main arm in Korea sent even more members to Japan, some of them as undercover agents. But deception is a tricky business. And all who could not strike at the heart of the Tojo clan were considered failures and forbidden from returning. In the end, those that couldn't carry out the mission were abandoned and left without any place to go. One of them happened to be my father. Then you were born here, in Japan? Yes, but be that as it may, I don't recall being welcomed here. I wasn't even accepted by any Korean communities either. My family was treated like slime, and kicked out from wherever we went. We came to be called the Stray Jingon Mafia, running away whenever we were discovered. Slimes who run away, huh? <laughs> Is that funny to you? No, I'm sorry, it's just the metal slimes, they... Well, you probably didn't think about it, but, but that's a classic. <laughs> Believe me, we weren't really going for a video game reference, Kasuga. Of course not, totally. Um, 
Anyway, the stray Jingon Mafia. Sorry. I didn't mean to be weird about it. I'm not bothered. You have a certain honesty about you I can even admire, Kasuga-san. So, what happened to the stray Jingon after that? Enter the 21st century, the winter of 2006. Around the time I turned 20, the Jingon Mafia from the mainland made an all-out assault against the Tojo clan. But even as that happened, the stray Jingon Mafia received not a word of warning. We were left completely in the dark. Our fathers were entirely forgotten by the countrymen that sent them here. You don't say. I might know a guy who could sympathize with that. Oh? Yeah. He's right in front of you. <laughs> I got tossed out by my family and locked up for 18 years. Oh, <laughs> that's right. That must be why I can't bring myself to hate you, Kasuga-san. So? What happened to the Jingon's big, all-out attack? Despite their careful planning, they were ultimately crushed by the Tojo clan. Ironically, those that survived came from all over to join those of us in the stray Jingon Mafia. <laughs> it was a miserable sight. Both sides cut off from home and left with no choice but to band together in the social sewer of a country that wasn't theirs. Sounds like you struggled. I wouldn't know it from looking at you, though. I could say the same to you. Yeah, finally starting to warm up to me? It would seem so. I haven't been acting much like myself today. I had a great time drinking with you, Kasuga-san. I truly mean that. So whatever happened to the real Junki Han? What's he up to now? He revived the Jingon Mafia roughly three years ago, and at that time had taken over a considerable portion of Kamurocho. But he was shot in the head and killed. I was absent at the time. And it all came crashing down, huh? Hmm? Wait. Then that means... Can't you use your real name now? Why keep up the body double thing? <sighs> you're... Uh... You're not trying to become the real Jungi Han, are you? Uh, who can say? But that's none of your concern, is it, Kasuga-san? Or am I wrong? Nah, uh, you got me there. <laughs> Farewell. Guess he's not the type to open up so easily. <laughs> I'll just have to keep drinking with him. Yo! How goes it, Kasuga-kun? <laughs> look at you. You're blending in already, Zhao. You know it. Turns out drinks taste a lot better without bodyguards watching your every move. Yeah? So that was the life of the former leader of the Yokohama Liumong. That shit was dumped on me from the day I was born. Kind of a drag. Growing up knowing you had a fucking script. Well, the nice thing about alcohol is it tastes better if you complain while you're drinking it. Ah, oh, sure. Enjoy my childhood trauma. <laughs> but I guess after all the shit you've been through, you've earned it. Your dad led the Yokohama Liumong before you, right? What's he doing now? Yeah, he died a few years after retiring. Right in his bed. He's lucky he never got shot or stabbed. Hey, yeah. That's a real achievement for a gang boss. Yeah, I guess so. He only managed it by sleeping with one eye open his whole life. No matter how you slice it, it's not a great way to live. I sure as hell didn't want to lead the Liu Meng. But Mabuchi... This shit was always up his alley. You mean Lao Ma? What even happened to that guy? I haven't even seen him since we kicked his ass during the whole Omi Alliance thing. Don't you know what the Yokohama Liumang does to traitors? 
They use this filling that goes inside meat buns. What? You serious? Right now, Laoma is... Baoma? <laughs> <laughs> You're fucking hilarious. But I was kidding. You think I'm the kind of guy who'd do that? <laughs> yeah, I thought it was a joke. Uh, him being your right-hand man and everything. And you're not the kind of guy to turn a brother into a meat bun, no matter what he did. <laughs> Appreciate that. I like to think I don't give off that vibe. I did stop short to give him Mabuchi what he deserved. After all the shit he put me through. What does that mean? Did you... kill Mabuchi? <laughs> oh, you're softer than any bun out there. Look at you all worried. I just don't like the thought of that happening to people. Even creeps like Mabuchi, who murdered your boss without a second thought? Even creeps like him. All I wanted was to knock that guy's lights out and hand him to the cops. <laughs> but by the time his lights were nice and knocked out, the army showed up, and you never saw him again, did you? You really did kill him, didn't you? Alright, I'm bored of messing with you. I didn't kill him. Oh, <laughs> had a feeling you didn't. Why is that? Hard to explain, but uh, I don't get that vibe from you. Not one bit. In fact, it always kind of felt to me like your hard ass act was just a show for your boys. A front you put on. Ah, that's a little harsh there, eh, Kasuga kun? You don't strike me as the type to lock guys up or torture them either. Especially one of your own, like Mabuchi. Hmm. He and I call the same place home. Nothing could make me take his life. But now, Song Hui's in charge of the Yokohama Liumang. It's up to her to settle things if Mabuchi shows his face again. He's the reason Komi Jewel's a pile of ashes, so... I don't think she'll be treating him as nice as I would. <laughs> Probably not. Which is why I gave Mabuchi the heads up. And told him to leave Ijincho. Really? Well, that's taking things into your own hands. A few of his boys went with him, and I forgave the ones that wanted to stick around. It's a hard reset. Clean slate for everyone. Song Hui was good with that. You two are more generous than I thought. Mabuchi brought in a lot of cash for us, and he was damn consistent about it. The fact that he kept a bunch of shit hidden from us was an issue, but I could deal. So you knew about it, and you just let it slide? The guys from my dad's generation were pissed, for sure. Kept saying Mabuchi was breaking sacred laws of the gang. But what did they expect from a sadist in Japan's most famous gray zone? And that he'd have a moral compass or some shit? <laughs> Seriously? How about we toast to Mabuchi, wherever he might be? Well, he's no friend of mine, but... What the hell? If you can cheer to him, I can too. Now we're talking. Welcome. Thanks.
Elections are the cornerstone of a just and fair democracy for all. Running for office as a publicity stunt is trampling all over that. And yet, Ichiban Katsuga, an ex-Yakuza who served 18 years in prison for murder, has for his own personal gain decided to take this sacred election with his candidacy. It's a sick joke! Listen to that. Sounds like he got the jump on you. You think? Strange that his campaign caught wind of the plan. But they're definitely trying to ensure you won't ever get near him. How? The whole reason Kume would have been obligated to shake your hand was because you were going to be the brave, noble underdog. But now he's trying to paint you as a villain, so he won't need to show you any respect. Oh, I get it. Well then, you know what? It's time to clear my name. Excuse me, everyone. Thank you for the introduction. I'm Ichiban Kasuga. Hey, there he is. Turn the cameras on him. Seriously? A murderer? Running for office? Can you believe it? It's ridiculous. You heard it? He's a murderer. I gotta hand it to my opponent here. He's such a generous guy. He's basically advertising for me. A total unknown. Can't wait to check my campaign's followers after this. Thank you so much, Kume-san. This is exactly what I was talking about, folks. He's got nothing but sarcasm and one-liners. Why won't this ex-convict take our democracy seriously? Ex-convict? You trying to say someone who broke the law can't run? That I've lost the right? Naturally. Well, it's true. I was in prison for 18 years. But the law says anyone can run, no matter what crimes they've committed. I'm standing here because my application was accepted. If you deny my right to run, then who's really disrespecting the law here? That be you, right, Mr. Law and Order? I, uh, never said... I never said anything about the law. Oh, so you're admitting the laws aren't always so perfect. I, well, in this case, it's strange, isn't it? Bleach Japan loves going around telling the rest of us to follow the law. But how do we follow laws that aren't just? Isn't that kind of a paradox? Well, laws are what you need to... Are you asking all these fine people to just accept that paradox? In this case, we must! I see. Well, that sounds like a gray zone to me. <laughs> Kume-san, people don't want to break the law. They really don't. But just like the law ain't perfect, neither are humans. They both exist in gray zones. Part good, part bad. <laughs> I mean, just one little mistake can send you down a slippery slope. It happened to me. I made a mistake that led me to this city. Luckily, I was rescued from that mistake, but not by the law. I was rescued by the people who live in the gray zones. And man, they didn't ask for that life. They got the raw end of a deal. They were never given a real choice. They want to be proud, hard-working members of society, as much as anyone in this crowd. They know the law is important. I do too. But we also know some things are more important. <laughs> people don't exist to serve the law. The law exists to serve the people. We ought to remember the words in that order. Don't you think, Kume-san? Kasuga knows what he's talking about. He's got my vote. Yeah, I like it. Go Ichiban! He's telling it like it is. Give him hell, Ichiban. We're with ya. Where do I donate to Team Kasuga? Screw that Kume guy. He's elitist. Kume-san, I think we can have a healthy debate in this campaign. Let's do this election fair and square. Why don't I come over there so we can shake on it? Yeah? Retreat! Retreat! Wait, what's the problem? 
Kume-san! You were in the middle of your speech! Wait! Kume-san! In a strange turn, this impromptu debate has ended with Kume, the frontrunner, making a quick retreat. The former Yakuza, ex-felon candidate, Ichiban Kasuga, has been generating buzz on social media. Useless! Kume, the staff, and even you are all useless! The only reason this happened is because you neglected to take it seriously. Enlighten me, Sawashiro. Why are you acting so strange? Got something to report? For now, we've decided to reorganize under a provisional name. The Tokyo Omi Alliance. We have sufficient manpower and resources. So I'll be assigning titles to... I'm sorry, are you under the impression you're the chairman or something? Huh? No. You had power in the Arakawa family. But I can assure you, it wasn't because you were competent. Kiss enough ass. Anyone can get a promotion like you did. You haven't had a spine since the days when you were following me around like a lost dog. I've taken pity on you because we had a history. But enough is enough. The new Tokyo Omi Alliance needs a chairman who understands how to wield power. Well, that's what I am. <sighs> a bold claim. I'll give you 24 hours to prove it by killing this man. What? If you fail, well, I assume you know the consequences. Yep. What's up? Stand there? Cool. Uh, 
Listen.
Hey! still hasn't noticed us. Musunidiji? <laughs> Moragu? Your support means everything! Thank you very much! Thank you... Yo! <laughs> it's Kasuka! The other candidate, Ichiba Kasuka, is here! Get cameras on him! There might be another debate! Kasuga, will you continue yesterday's debate? No, I think Kume-san took enough damage yesterday. I actually came to make peace with him. Why would we ever make peace? Hey, it's hard to talk in front of all these cameras, you know? Wanna talk in private? That'll be way better. Let's just hop into your van here. Nice ride, by the way. Okay, okay, give him some space. Kasuga-san. Yeah? Chairman Hoshino's life is in danger. Huh? The Komijul got an anonymous tip that the Seryu clan is going to be attacked. Chairman Hoshino is the target. And Song Hui said there's something suspicious happening at the Seryu clan. The chairman? Oh, him! I think we need to put a hold on the Kume and Aoki mission. Yeah, we'll be back. <laughs> what? Hey, are we done with Kume already? Something's going down. It's urgent.
Watch me. takes me back. Huh? A photo studio? I had a family picture taken here when I was little. Both Nanoha and I were so nervous, we did not look cute at all. And the photo still got displayed in the showroom. I guess you two were cute even back in the day. Well, I won't deny that. Oh, looks like the studio went out of business. Uh, sign of the times, I guess. You don't see too many taking family photos nowadays. Guess not. That's too bad. I wonder if that picture we took is still a Well.
Captain Takabe! Kasuga. You're shot! It was the Omi Alliance. About ten of them. One had a gun. They're looking for the Patriarch. They're going to kill him. His office is a ways up from here, right? Yes. Hurry. Please. Finally, you make your entrance. The Omi Alliance. Where's the chairman? Huh. Give the boys a sec. They're still cleaning up. What's that mean? Don't fuck with me, you assholes! Yep, well, take this. Take this. You You killed the chairman? You were late every damn time. Any job I sent you on, the smallest errand. Why, though? Why would you kill the chairman? This will be the end of the E. Jean 3. He was a tired old man who served as the Grey Zone's pillar. And that pillar supported Ijincho. Without him, it'll crumble unless we intervene. The young master agrees. Why are you two like this? Why are you so paranoid? You've already won pretty much everything, and you still had to kill the chairman in cold blood? Why would Ryo Aoki need to do this when he's already on top of the world? What if I told you it was your fault? What? Hey, Ichiban. Ichiban! <laughs> Forget it. 
You know how important it is to the young master that he wins this district, but you got in his way. A felon like you suddenly decides to make a run for the seat. He doesn't like being defied. Especially not by the likes of you. Sounds to me like you're scared I could win. <laughs> Are you kidding? Not in a million years. Why else would you need to kill Chairman Hoshino? You know him. He doesn't even like to be inconvenienced. So how do you think he feels about this? Well then why didn't you just kill me? Oh, I would have preferred that. But your campaign has drawn so much attention. I guess you could call it a timing issue if you need a reason. So you killed the chairman in my place? Yes. The e Gene 3 was the machine keeping you on life support. If pulling the trigger on you would make too big of a splash, we figured pulling the plug out of the wall would be the next best thing. Every time I think the young master couldn't sink any lower, he proves me wrong. What the fuck is his problem? What made him turn out to be such a bastard? I'm sure the both of us mean nothing to him. So why would he have to go so far just to crush garbage like me under his foot? What satisfaction do you two get from watching me break? Tell me what any of this is for! <laughs> is Arakawa-san's death your fault too, you fucking coward? Maybe it is, maybe it isn't. Doesn't really matter now, does it? Sawashiro! something to worry about. You beat him last time, didn't you? Yeah, but it was probably just luck. Either that or he wasn't really trying. And you don't know Captain Sawashiro like I do. Holding a weapon really amps him up. Uh, so this is gonna be a tough fight any way you slice it. For sure. I mean, he's a captain under Arakawa the Assassin. So everyone be careful! Got it. Well... Let's go! Yeah? Sure you yeah. Me? Yeah. I have secrets too! I'll make your heart skip! <laughs> Stand there? Oh, got to go. Cool. Here. My thanks. Out of my way! I got this. Is that all you got? Watch me. Wait! 
well. This should help. I got this. Thank you. I got this. Please take this. What kind of move was that? A way more powerful one than I thought. It's based on a Western martial art. Since when do you know martial arts, dude? Since always. The reason I fought with an umbrella was because I got the idea from an old martial arts book. And is the captain using the same fighting style right now? Yeah. Actually, watching him is really teaching me a lot that I didn't understand in the book. Damn. How many different martial arts does the captain know? Well, I think we're about to find out. Huh. Makes me feel like a wimp. You're in for it. Now. Check this out! I wouldn't have done it. Who's dying alone? Hot stuff. Thank you very much. Right. It's go time. I'm dizzy. Come on. Well, this yeah. should help. Take hold. I'm sure. Cool. Yeah. Cool. Bring it on. Bring it on. On it. Heads up! Thank you very much. Watch I got you. I'll show you. This one's special. Well. Watch me. Use this. 
Thank you very much. Cool. Just gonna stand I'll there? I'll show you. Yeah. Come on. <laughs> something odd about this uh yeah not like there was anything normal about this to begin with man this guy is savage as hell yeah he's pulling out all the stops you've got to stay on your toes everyone Eyes on me. 
Shiro I knew would never just blindly follow orders, not even the young masters. There's no excuse in the world that could justify killing Arakawa-san! Yes, there is. To me, the young master's orders are law. My life's purpose is to protect him. My life's purpose was to protect Arakawa-san! I know that. I know that all too well. Captain. And just so you know, I didn't kill Arakawa-san. Huh. I thought the young master ordered you to, because of me! He did order me to. What? But that was the only time I ever disobeyed one of his orders. I couldn't kill Masumi Arakawa. I can't explain it, but even as low as I've fallen, that was the one order I couldn't follow. How could I? Because you couldn't put aside your respect for Arakawa-san. Well, you think a Yakuza can't take out his own patriarch? No. That wasn't it. No? The real reason was... And I've never told this to anyone. Not even the young master. So why are you telling me? Just listen. The first time I saw Masumi Arakawa, it was only a short while before I swore my oath to him. I was 15. Just a dumb kid with no direction, no future. Back when I was getting into fights on the streets of Kamurocho, I had no money. All I had waiting for me at home was my drunk father's fists. The only people I could trust were the other guys who also had nothing. My girl was... <laughs> I can't even remember her name. Anyway, we shacked up and played house, even though we didn't really think it would last. By the time she told me she was pregnant with our child, it was too late for an abortion. What are we gonna do? We can't raise a kid. There's no way in hell. All we could do was pray she'd have a miscarriage. We just ignored her growing stomach, going about life pretending it wasn't there. No hospital visits or anything like that. But of course, you can't ignore an actual baby. She ended up giving birth in a department store bathroom. All on her own. I was working at the time, laying asphalt, as I recall. What now? Just pretend it didn't happen. Brush it under the rug. That's what you do with secrets. That's how we dealt with stuff our whole lives. Who was there to teach us any other way? No one. Which is why...
We're going to hell, aren't we? I know it. Why are you saying that? Nothing happened, okay? It's chilly out. Let's go home. <laughs> no, I can't do this. I'm going back. Are you serious? It's over. Just forget about it. I can't! I have to go back! Stop! We took care of it! Let me go! Fuck! What? Damn it! Open your piece of shit! Open! That's the locker, we... Does he know? Why else would he try to open it? Did he hear the baby in there? He had to, right? This is my child. Well, this might work out. Huh? Yeah. yeah, that guy will look after him. I don't understand. This is a gift, right? It's for the best, really. <laughs> hey, are you okay? Huh? Damn it! So, Arakawa-san took your baby? That means... Shit! That baby was... Masato Arakawa. The young master. The young master... is your son? The boss told you about that night, didn't he? New Year's Eve. His woman was being chased by the Hikawa family. They decided to hand off the baby using a locker. How could they have known that there would be another baby in the same row of lockers? What were the chances? So you see how it happened? Arakawa followed the sound of a baby's cries and pried open the locker. Five years later, the mother of my child was out of my life. But Masumi Arakawa... He was still in Kamurocho. With my son. Why is that? Huh? That kid... I did some research on the man. Arakawa started his own Yakuza family at a pretty young age. So he was gaining some notoriety already. I found out a lot. Like how the kid in the chair had never been able to walk. Because of severe hypothermia he'd suffered when he was born. Enough, Masato. words, and I swear they echoed in my head for months. Even if I'd never had a son, the Yakuza path was my fate. It always had been. I'd been living my life half-assed for so long. Are you sure you want this? There's no turning back once you've sworn an oath. I'm sure. But 
suddenly I saw another way. I could swear an oath to Masumi Arakawa. Okay, then drink. <laughs> Arakawa the Assassin was his nickname then. He didn't fuck around. I get it now. I get why you swore loyalty to Arakawa. It wasn't because he was the legendary Arakawa the Assassin. That's what drew everyone else to Arakawa. But you swore your oath to be near the young master. Does he know any of this? I told you. This is a secret I've never told anyone before. Honestly, I thought I would take it to my grave. And then why did you tell me? Because there's something I want to ask you. Me? Okay, shoot. Didn't you notice there's one crucial detail missing from that locker story? Crucial detail? Use your head. If Arakawa-san took my son out of the locker, then where is his real son? Uh, yeah, good point. The boss said his woman's name was Akane. And before he met her, she'd been working at a soap land called Shangri-La. Shangri-La? Seriously? That's where I was born. Yes. So take this next part with a grain of salt. But here's my theory. On that night, New Year's Eve, Akane called Arakawa-san to tell him she was being hunted. She knew they'd find her at the maternity ward, so she left. But as soon as she did, she went into labor. She desperately needed to find a place to have her baby, where she wouldn't be found. So I think she may have gone to her old workplace, Shangri-La. And, as you just said, that's where you were born, correct? But that... You're making it sound like I... It can't be. After the boss took the young master out of the locker, I saw another baby. You did? Move! Move! <laughs> Long after all the fuss died down, she and I just stood there. We were shocked. Our doomed child had been saved. And now we had to just move on. I have to admit I felt relieved. But... I couldn't see why a Yakuza had been so desperate to save a baby. Sure, maybe he'd heard it crying. But why the desperation? And he didn't even call for help. It was such a fucking mystery. It gave me a headache. But a few minutes later, I got my answer. Boss, is it one of these? Yes, hurry! Open up every single one that isn't locked. Okay, I'm on it. What are they doing? I don't know. I hope to hell it wasn't this one. He's not here. Oh! Gotcha! Boss! Over here! I found him! You sure it's him? Wait. No. If he's still here... That can only mean the handoff didn't go as planned. Another baby? What should we do? Take him to the police? No. I need to hold on to him for a while. In case Akane comes back for him. You think she's gonna make it? She said her life was in danger. It was at that moment I realized... The other man had taken the wrong baby.
You took the wrong baby. After putting you in the locker, Akane-san kept running. Right up until the Hikawa family caught her. I think that while she was on the run, she told someone she could trust about her baby in the locker, just in case. I didn't recognize the two people that came to pick up the other baby. But if one of them was Jiro Kasuga, your foster father, owner of that soap land, then... You're Masumi Arakawa's son. Sh shut up, man. There's no way. But isn't there? A DNA test would be a simple way to find out. Without a test, you'll never know for sure. <gasps> or if you think I'm talking out of my ass, just walk away. Forget I told you. Hell no. You think I'm going to just let you walk away after you killed the Seiryu clan's chairman? Do what you will to me. I had no future then. I have no future now. Why not? Ryoaki told me to kill Arakawa, and I refused. He clearly already decided I was disposable when he gave me this hit. Take out a chair, I wasn't expecting me to come out of this alive. All I am to him now is a third-rate hitman. My success or failure hardly matters. But then... I need you to answer me, Captain. If you didn't kill Arakawa-san, who did? I don't know for sure. But maybe Lieutenant Ishioda. He's the young master's favorite peon now, since Arakawa-san is dead. Arakawa-san's death is on Ishioda, then. Sawashiro, I still can't let you walk away. As much as I'd like to kill you myself, you need to pay for your sins the legit way. Pay for my sins? The legit way? <laughs> That's not the way I've led my life. What's up? I found out who gave us the tip about Chairman Hoshino being in danger. It was Sawashiro himself. What the hell? Why would he give himself away? To venture a guess, I don't think Sawashiro actually wanted to kill the chairman. What? I believe he was hoping you would stop him, Kasuga-san. <gasps> but he couldn't say that outright, because it would have been betraying Aoki. So instead, he leaked his plan to kill Chairman Hoshino, and left his fate in your hands. But that means we failed. We didn't stop him. Shit. You always made such impossible demands of me, Captain. God damn it!
It was at that moment I realized the other man had taken the wrong baby. Then your Masumi Arakawa's son. Yeah. I dream that it's 40 years ago. On that cold New Year's Eve night, Akan is there, and she's about to give birth to her baby. She gives birth in Shangri-La. In the dream, it's Masato who ends up being born in that soap land. Did Arakawa son know I was his son all along? Hey, what's going on with you, man? Everyone's worried. I am too. Don't be. I just gotta settle something. What? With who? Ryo Aoki. Who else? But how? We don't even know where he is. Get Kume to tell me. Where is the bastard? He'll know! Okay, okay. My guess is he's probably giving a speech somewhere. Maybe he's at the Bleach Japan office? Yeah. Most likely the Hakuryo building. So that's where I'm going. But really? Well, uh, we're going too then. We were just gonna call you. They're all Omi Alliance men. Not that they'll admit it. Are they just staring at us? Yeah, and more of them keep showing up. I don't like this. Yeah, I don't think they like us much either. Great. Then we all want the same thing. Hey, we're leaving! Let's just stay out of each other's way! Yo, if you want to just sit there, go for it. But I'm coming through! <laughs> nice. We're skipping right to the good part. Well, quit gawking and bring it on already! Yep, Shogun. Do your voice. Watch me. It ends here. Let's go! I got this. Cool. Not Bring it on. Korea. Korea. I could I Please take this! 
Okay.
This could get rough. With finesse.
It's done. Watch me. Watch me. 
to hustle.
With finesse. Sure get around, don't we? No, actually, I've been thinking of going on a diet lately, so this is perfect. You? On a diet? What brought that on? Well, if I'm being honest, it's because I added another notch under my belt. I'm getting fatter by the second these days, so I figured I'd better whip myself into shape. If it's weight loss you're after, I can be of service. Oh, you uh, got some diet regime I can follow? Indeed. The first thing to do is cut out carbs. You'll see a fairly large change just from that. You'll need to refrain from eating things like onigiri, bread, or noodles. <laughs> if that's all it's gonna take, then sign me up. <laughs> you say that, but you'd totally try to sneak some bread in. That's where I come in. 
Using the Komijul surveillance system, we can observe Adachi-san cheating on his diet. But what happens then? We get out the bow guns. Ooh, a life or death diet. Good luck, Adachi-san. <laughs> I think I'll stick to running around. Talk about a waste of the Komijul's time. out today yeah haven't had any rain recently of course we haven't who you think's bringing the sunshine down every day you know ichiban being the sun guy is actually kind of fitting hey no praise required i'll keep doing it uh it wasn't praise whatever the case great weather certainly does brighten one's mood doesn't it wow guys have it so easy don't they i'm out here worrying about getting too much sun and what it's doing to my skin yeah, seriously. Think about all the stuff us girls have to deal with. You're acting like it's my fault.
right? I'm just on a job, but my tendonitis is killing me these days. Each time I click this tally counter... Hey, now, don't hurt yourself. Why don't you take a break if it's hurting that badly? Well, I hired some help, but they bailed on me last minute. Can't exactly take a break anymore. No! No! Whoa, easy. That doesn't sound good. Want me to call you an ambulance? No, no, no. As long as I don't use the tally counter, I'm good. Besides, it's not like anyone's rushing out to do my job. Kids of today aren't interested in the modest life of a traffic census taker. Traffic sensor? The hell's that? What? You've never heard of a traffic census before? Never in my life. Bet it's complicated, though. Yeah? Oh, no. It's quite easy. My job simply entails counting the pedestrians and cars that pass by. Ah. So, uh, how do you count them? I sit along the edge of this road and count everything that comes through. What do you mean? Uh, for example, let's say I count cars. Ooh! Hey, you okay? Uh, yeah, more or less. Ugh. Whenever a car passes by, you click the counter like this. Got it? Sure. Something passes by, I click the thing. Right you are. You're a quick learner. Well, now that you know the rules, what do you say we give it a try? Now hold up. I might have learned how it's done, but I never said anything about doing the job. No, oh, no, no, no! You really say that to a man whose crippling tendonitis is keeping him from the very thing he loves? Please, my super perm friend. Oh, oh, the pain's getting worse by the click. Oh. And it pays pretty well for a job where you sit on your rump all day. So it wouldn't hurt to try. Really? Oh, that'd be a big help. Oh, by the way, what's your name? Ichiban Kasuga. Kasuga -hun. A fine name. I'm Shirabe Michino. Been doing the traffic census job around these parts for 30 years now. 30 years? You're a real veteran, huh? <laughs> I suppose so. That nothing goes uncounted thanks to these eyes. My peers call me the Traffic Sensor Sensei. Makes you sound like a legend, Pops. <laughs> yeah, well, not while my hands are. Wait, if, if doing your job gives you tendonitis, wouldn't that mean there's a lot of physical labor involved? No, it's not a physically demanding job by any means. Traffic in these parts is quite hectic, you see? It takes a lightning-fast clicker. And you seem a heck of a lot sturdier than me, Kasuka Kuhn. So it's nothing you need to worry about. Okay. So all I gotta do is keep that counter clicking. Yes, indeed. The clicking of the counter paves the way for road plans, construction projects, the very future as we know it. So that's why I'd always see guys sitting on their asses clicking these things. Exactly. They were counting all different types of cars and people. Businesses and organizations use this data to advance city development. Huh. Learn something every day. Well, I'd very much like to start practicing, but are you ready? Yeah. Lay it on me. <laughs> Good answer. Then consider your training officially begun. Why don't we first start off by counting how many men pass by within 15 seconds? The number of men passing by. All right. Cool. Got it.
Yeah. Yeah. Arigato. Got it. Mm-hmm. Ha, ha, ha. 